this divides into three key areas. So uh, the first is location. So small cells are not in traditional macro cell locations such as rooftops and towers. Um, they're more in the street level clutter, so on uh, lampposts and stuff like that. That's the first difference. Second is numbers. So um, because you want to uh, typically deploy small cells for a capacity up uplift, you're looking at deploying large numbers of small cells. So a significantly greater number of small cells than macros. And finally, there's the shape of the data. So because you're aggregating fewer U UEs uh, than you are in a macro environment, the shape of the data changes. So uh, for a typical macro cell, you might have a four to one peak to mean ratio. That's pretty much the average. Uh, whereas for uh, small cells, the, the estimated average will be about 10 to one in a mature network. And, and in trials we've done, the, uh, the average is currently not much higher than that. Wireless is going to be absolutely fundamental for small cell backhaul because uh, because of those non-traditional locations, it, it's really unlikely you're going to have fiber accessible everywhere you want to deploy a small cell. So, uh, for example, uh, you know, at street lights, very unlikely you'll have fiber. It's possible that fiber might be close by, maybe only five or ten meters away, but that's still not really much help. You still need a wireless last hop to get you onto the fiber in the first place. So, um, wireless technology will be absolutely fundamental to small cell backhaul. The three technologies that we're seeing most interest in from operators are uh, non line of sight wireless, so sub 6 gigahertz, uh, whether it's Wi Fi in the unlicensed based or licensed non line of sight uh, backhaul. Um, line of sight multi point also is a great solution, uh, obviously, it gives you much higher quality of experience than the typical non line of sight solutions because there's just much higher capacity. Um, and E band and V band uh, really have their significant place in the middle mile where you've already done quite a lot of traffic aggregation very high capacity sites, uh, things like that. But um, the problem with uh, those point-to-point -point type technologies is you typically, de you know, you're going to deploy twice as much equipment, so pretty expensive to use for the majority of your rollout. So really you just use those in, in kind of specific cases and where you've already done aggregation, as I say, so sort of middle mile from a high site back to a point of presence, something like that. It's more of a sort of toolbox approach, so you'll use um, different uh, technologies in different parts of the network, so it almost becomes a backhaul het net. Um, in the access space, people talk about het nets, and that's really um, using uh, a, macro, a macro kind of coverage layer and then putting in small cells to add capacity. And we think there's a similar concept, so a backhaul het net where you use different technologies which are complementary to one another, which have different strengths, and use those in different parts of the network. So um, non-line of sight, for example, is particularly good for very adverse locations for small cells. So uh, you know, where, the, where there's foliage clutter or something like that. Um, but those are not actually the majority of cases, so uh, that's lucky because those are quite low capacity solutions. If you think about uh, higher capacity solutions, then line of sight multipoint um, between 6 GHz and 42 GHz is a great solution for that because it has plenty of capacity. Uh, it's a multipoint solution, so you're only deploying half as much equipment as a point to point solution. Uh, area licensing, uh, so it's very easy and very flexible for an operator to roll out. Um, and gives you more than enough capacity to deliver the best quality of experience to a user. And then finally, um, in, in the middle mile where you've done a bit more aggregation, you'll probably think about using V-band and E-band type technologies, so uh, very high frequency point-to-point -point links. Those give you superb capacity, uh, gigabit per second plus, um, but they're really quite, quite awkward to roll out, so you have a sort of precision alignment to do at both ends, um, and, and you're deploying twice as much equipment as in a, a multi-point uh, backhaul um, setup. So, um, so you'll really use those in special cases as well. So, so if you think about the sort of overall network, then you, you deploy each of the technologies um, where it's most suited.